Hi. Click the link in the description of this video to visit our new channel 2 Minute Dog to learn about various drugs and diseases in just 2 minutes. Welcome to Medwitch Made Simple. We are gonna hit 10,000 subscribers very soon. So if you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button right now to join the family of 10,000 medicals. This video is about yellow fever virus. Yellow fever virus belongs to arboviruses. So arboviruses are arthropod born viruses. So these viruses are generally transmitted by arthropods. Yellow virus belongs to Flaviviridae family. In Flaviviridae family, the most important viruses to study are yellow fever virus and dengue virus. The vector for transmission of Yellow fever virus is Aedes aegypti mosquito. There are two life cycles of yellow fever virus. The one which occurs in jungle is called jungle cycle or sylvatic cycle. The infection is transmitted from an infected Aedes aegypti mosquito to monkeys and this keeps going. This is called as jungle cycle and the urban cycle is the one which occurs in cities. Here an infected mosquito will be transmitting the infection to healthy humans and the cycle keeps on going and this is the urban cycle pathogenesis when an infected Aedes, Aedes aegypti mosquito bites a healthy person what happens is that the virus will initially enter the site of bite and it multiplies locally and then it spreads to the bloodstream of the patient and that is called as viremia then finally, it disseminates to distant organs like liver, kidney and so many other organs causing systemic manifestations. The clinical features. There's an initial extrinsic incubation period of 8 to 10 days. So what is this? Initially, consider a patient who is infected with yellow fever virus. When a non-infected mosquito which doesn't have any virus inside it bites that infected person what happens is that this mosquito will get the virus from the uh, el from the patient who is infected with yellow fever virus so for 8 to 10 days this mosquito will not be able to transmit the infection to any person whom it, it's gonna bite okay so for 8 to 10 days if this mosquito is gonna bite someone they're not gonna get yellow fever virus infection so that is why this period is called as extrinsic incubation period and remember that it, it lasts for 8 to 10 days. So once this mosquito crosses 8 to 10 days, what happens is that this mosquito will become infective and now if this mosquito bites some person, it is capable of transmitting yellow fever virus to that person. So consider if this mosquito has crossed 8 to 10 days uh, after getting infected, now it is capable of infecting further people. Now, once this mosquito bites a healthy individual, what happens is that initially there will be an incubation period of about 3 to 6 days in the patient where the virus will be multiplying silently without causing any manifestations in the patient. Now, after this incubation period of about 3 to 6 days, there will be non-specific manifestations like fever, chills, myalgia, which is generalized body aches and headache vomiting, nausea and all the non-specific symptoms and this is the febrile phase. Many cases can be self-resolving and they resolve spontaneously but some cases can progress to severe form and in severe cases there will be manifestations like hemorrhagic manifestations, hepatitis, renal failure and later dysfunction can occur which can worsen the hemorrhagic manifestations occurring. Diagnosis can be done by serology where we detect antibodies and IgM antibodies are detected by ELISA and this is one of the commonly preferred method as it is non-invasive and it is actually an easy technique. Viral isolation can be done by various culture techniques but this is not so commonly preferred as it is time consuming. Molecular methods are very sensitive and specific. Uh, it is done by polymerase chain reaction. Uh, reverse transcriptase PCR or real-time PCR can be done but it is costly so it is um, less commonly done compared to ELISA in the current day scenario in developing countries. 
there is no specific treatment for yellow fever virus infection. So the treatment is mostly symptomatic where we support the patient until the infection resolves by itself. So we basically try to control the fever, we can control the hepatitis which is occurring or the renal failure which is gonna, we're trying to prevent the uh, uh, patient from progressing to severe cases and trying to support the patient uh, trying to maintain the vitals and all that and pre preventing the complications from arising in these patients so that the infection will resolve by itself hopefully. There's a vaccine to prevent fever virus infection and that vaccine is called as 17D vaccine. It is a live attenuated vaccine. So that's it about fever virus infection. We have learned about almost all the important stuff we must cover about fever virus infection hope you found this video um, helpful if you did make sure to hit the like button right now and comment below telling me how you felt after watching this video don't forget to check out channel 2 minute doc to learn about various drugs and diseases in just 2 minutes for amazing lectures slides click on the link in the description of this video for best deals visit www.faxideastips.com and you can support my channel by donating on Patreon. Thank you so, so much for watching this video till the end. Make sure to hit the like button, share this video to your friends and comment your suggestions below. I'll see you guys in my next video.